What you're looking here is a Schroeder HTB test bench. It's designed specifically to test hydraulic pumps, motors, valves, and cylinders. The bench is powered by a 100 horsepower electric motor that runs on 230, 460 volts. Before you purchase this test bench, you'll need to check with your power company to see if you have enough power to run the bench. The bench has a 100 horsepower electric motor that runs on 230 or 460 volts, three phase, 60 hertz power. The 400 volt uh, is, draws approximately 250 amps, the 230 volt draws approximately 500 amps. The bench also has inlets for putting your conduit for your uh, wiring, and it also has to be installed at least three feet away from the wall so you can have access around the bench to do any maintenance that's necessary. The bench does not necessarily have to be bolted to the floor because its weight of 5,000 pounds is enough to hold it in place when doing any testing. The test bench has some safety features I'm going to point out to you right now. This expanded metal screen is to protect the operator from any kind of breakage of hoses or belts so they don't come out and hit the operator. Uh, they also have a driveline cover here that's for protecting the operator from the driveline coming loose and, and uh, throwing debris out. We also have an overspeed switch which is a safety device so you don't overspeed the pumps when you're testing. It'll shut the bench down at 2400 RPMs. Also we have an 80 pound uh, pressure switch built into it so if you start the bench and you don't see 80 pounds on the gauge it'll sh shut the bench down. Optionally, we have a, also a clamshell made of Lexian that covers the front of the bench for testing. You can open it up, it slides on rollers, connect your pump, and close it for testing. Before we start the bench, we have to check to make sure that the electric wiring is correct to both the start stop and to the electric motors. And once we've done that, we can then jog the electric motor to see if it's turning in the right direction. There are arrows on both the pump and the motor showing the right rotation of the pumps and the motor. The next thing we check is the sight gauge for the oil reservoir to make sure it's totally full. If all this is okay at that point, we can then start the bench and, and let it run for a while to warm up. Before we test the pump, we have to make sure it's mounted properly on the bench. If you look here, we have a drive line that attaches to the pump and to the drive motor. And then we have to have the correct hoses to the bench. And this particular one goes to the pressure side of the pump. And this is the suction side of the pump. Now, once it's hooked this way, we're ready to start testing. Now that we have the pump connected, the next thing we have to do is decide which way the, the pump should be turning. In this particular case, it's counterclockwise. So we take the lever 18, put it in the clockwise position. Next thing we do is we take valve 16, which is closed, and we open it, and, and that now starts the drive motor. The next thing we do is we take the valve number 17 here in the lever, and we bring it back to full flow. And we take valve 12, and we screw it all the way into the bench until it stops. At this point, that rotation of the pump should be showing you around a thousand RPM. Now we know that this per pump particularly runs at 1700 RPM. To gain 1700 RPM, when we take lever 18 and start to pull it toward us very slowly until we reach the 1700 RPM time. At that point, the flow gauge should tell us that the pump is putting out 10 gallons per minute. Now that's a no load condition. So what we want to do now is we want to load that pump down. In order to do that, we take valve number 13 and start screwing it in and watch engage number two on the bench until it reaches the working pressure of 1500 PSI. At that point, we record the flow and at that point, we can take and figure out how, what the efficiency of this pump is. And now we're going to start the bench.
Now the pump test is complete. Now we're going to remove the pump so we can do a cylinder test. The cylinder test is a very simple test. All we have to do is connect the blind end of the cylinder to port 10 of the test bench and the rod end of the cylinder to port 7 of the test bench. Then we come over here to the controls and we close valve number 16 and we bring the throttle control back halfway and turn down valve number 12 all the way. Once valve 12 is turned down all the way then we can take valve 19 which is a cylinder valve and push it into the extend mode and extend the cylinder and look for any kind of external leakage. Then what you do is you bring the cylinder valve back and then retract it, put it in the neutral position and look for any drift on the cylinder. If it drifts then you know you've got internal leakage on the cylinder. And that basically is the complete test. And now we're going to start the cylinder test. And that completes the cylinder test. This is going to be a valve test we're going to do right now. It's a very simple test. We just connect the valve to the pressure port on the test bench, which would be port 7. We run a return line from the valve to the tank port number 9. This is also a relief valve, so we're going to test it also and we're going to reset it. So what we do next is we come over here and make sure valve 16 is totally closed. And we take the flow control, bring it about halfway, and we take valve number 12 and we screw it all the way down in. At this point, valve, the main pump valve number 1 is going to show nothing. So what we do is we walk back here, we look at the valve, make sure there's no external leaks. If there is any external leaks, we need to fix them before we do anything else. Now if we find no external leaks then we're ready to set the relief. So what we do is we take this handle on the relief and turn it in until we reach a pressure on gauge number one. That's what we want this set for. So if it's 2,000 pounds we turn this in until that gauge shows 2,000 pounds. At that point we now come back to number 12 and we back it off a little bit and then we reset it all the way down and it should not go past 2,000 pounds. At that point, if it stays at 2,000 pounds, the relief valve set and the valve test is completed. And now we're going to run the valve test.
And that's the end of the valve test. In order to keep this bench running for many years, you have to perform some preventive maintenance on it. It's very simple maintenance. Uh, it requires uh, just a grease gun and a wrench to change some elements. When the red light indicates filter change, that means we change the elements in all the filters. There's one filter right here. You remove the cap from it, take the elements out, and replace them with the new elements. And there are always at least a dozen elements with the bench when we ship it. And in the back of the bench are more filters back here. The two filters in the back of the bench use the same elements as the filters in the front. Uh, they're very simple to change by removing the caps and pulling the elements out. They are disposable and they are three micron. The other thing you need to change is the red cap over there, which is an air breather. You change all these filters and you do this preventive maintenance. This bench should last you for many, many years. The optional items for this test bench include a water-cooled heat exchanger, a solenoid and pilot operated valve test group, a jib crane group, a spline shaft insert group, a hose and fittings group, a supplemental full flow inline filtration group, a safety test enclosure, and a digital readout package. For additional information, please visit our website or call us.